appreciate uh, the welcoming. You're all very welcome. Uh, let me start by saying that uh, it is a privilege uh, to host uh, so many leading researchers and experts on our global value chains. And I'm excited that we have all come together here uh, in the same room to work closely for the next couple of days. Uh, I'm looking forward uh, to uh, each discussion and even more so to learning from the collective wisdom of such a prestigious group of individuals and organizations. The CPR and the World Bank Group have decided to join uh, forces to foster debate and drive collaboration between researchers in academia, experts in policy institutions, and practitioners in the private sector on the important and timely questions raised by the emergence of global value chains. The term global value chain, or GVC, is now part of the daily lexicon in trade and development, and rightly so. Today, countries develop and industrialize primarily by focusing on a specialized tasks along these production chains, as we know. And we must seek answers on how best to integrate regions into this dynamic world economy. Patterns of uh, development have changed. To find the right answers, we required expanded, expanded uh, perspectives on growth, we require new insights on the development dividends of increased productivity, upgrading, and organizational change. Understanding how best to participate in GVCs and how to produce at world-class standards has become increasingly important to achieve structural transformation and development in the 21st century. Policymakers and business leaders in developing countries are well aware that competing successfully and sustainably in GVCs will require becoming hyper-competitive in specific tasks. Yet the why, the what, and the how of GVCs are far from being fully understood. We need new theoretical models, better data, and careful empirical studies to understand These sourcing considerations are extremely complex, and so are the interrelations of this new form of global production with trade policy and the impacts on the wider domestic and international economy. With the rapid pace of technological progress, which is according to many experts at a point of exponential acceleration, the dividends and rents from any given acquired technology can change overnight. Competition is fiercer. So the need for innovating for learning from best practice, from producing at world-class standards is a must. Countries and firms that escape GVCs struggle to compete. Policies such as import substitution and nationalistic industrial policies do not work anymore. So we here at the uh, World Bank Group see this in our client engagements. In uh, Vietnam, for example, uh, when the country opened up to the global economy, There were high hopes for driving structural change through greater participation in sectors, including the apparel, electronics, and automotive value chains. And in the apparel and uh, electronic value chains, uh, things have gone uh, quite well. In the automotive value chain, the government sought examples of policies that it could emulate to stimulate growth in the sector. So it didn't have to look far, of course, as Thailand had managed to upgrade in the auto GVC by starting in assembly, bringing in FDI from a global lead firm, and later becoming a regional base for full production. However, the conditions were much different. Thailand had succeeded over a period of time when it faced very little regional competition. When Vietnam decided to implement a similar combination of subsidies to foreign manufacturers and local content requirements for passenger cars sold in the country, it did not bring about the same results. Today, the auto sector in Vietnam is still limited to assembly, and generously subsidized. So over the next few years, it is likely to face even fiercer competition from Indonesia and Thailand as the ASEAN market continues to open up, and from firms in the NAFTA auto GVC in the Trans-Pacific Partnership context. While some in governments uh, still see strong potential to increase domestic car production in uh, Vietnam, 
particularly as middle class growth, uh, the ASEAN Free Trade Agreement and the, and the potential TPP will likely present tremendous challenges. Vietnam, and for that matter, many other countries, need more informed policies put in place now to improve competitiveness, for example, on the impacts of trade and investment policies uh, on domestic competitiveness. Research and many of the ideas being presented here today over, the, over this uh, uh, two days can help inform these decisions, can help inform new strategies for our world of global value chains. Due to the development potential of GVC participation, the World Bank Group has made it a top priority to help developing countries connect to and develop through global value chains. To support this wor work, we have established a global solutions group housed here in uh, TNC uh, and led by our own Daria Tagloni, a team of uh, over 180 experts with cross-cutting skill sets with a specific mandate to improve the development outcomes of programs and projects incorporating GVCs. The group's objective is precisely that, to develop innovative analysis and approaches to facilitating international development through GVCs and to mainstream these tools into project design and implementation, something that is, of course, very relevant for us here at the, at the bank. Input from thought leaders and experts in GVC analysis, including those convening here today, will be important to our success cross-fertilization between research, policy, and the business reality of firms is needed for innovative and economically sound, non-distortive solutions to emerge. So it is time to challenge conventional wisdom and to bring about some fresh thinking in this area of global value chains. Up until now, the development community has had, in a way, a very emulative uh, unidirectional uh, uni discourse on GVC-led development strategies. A narrow focus on the success stories in GVCs has resulted in policy prescriptions that too often seek to, to make each country uh, the next Singapore or the next uh, South Korea. But this simply does not suffice. So over the past uh, few years, as some of these initial success stories have come to face challenges, including in my own uh, home country of Costa Rica, who recently dealt with Intel's transitioning from assembly and testing to R&D operations, questions and concerns have been raised and the need for a better uh, and deeper understanding of the drivers and implications of production, sourcing strategies, and competitiveness has become even more uh, evident. Today and tomorrow, we will listen to the insights by leading researchers and experts in GVCs and by practitioners in the private sector including McKinsey, FedEx, and Walmart. We will be covering topics in GVCs that range from the structure and functioning of production networks to firm organization to the implications for trade policy and macro policies with expertise that spans across many different level fields, including international trade, development, industrial organization, and international macroeconomics. I'm looking forward to each presentation. Now is the time to question old approaches and identify new ones, to pay more attention to detail, and to better understand the heterogeneity in patterns and behaviors, the nuances of a GBC economy. Now is the time to find answers, and that is precisely the purpose of this conference. I wish, uh, I wish you all a very fruitful two days of interesting and beneficial program, and also that you have a pleasant stay in Washington, D.C. Thank you very much.